Late last year, AMD faced competition from Intel thanks to the 12th generation of processors, and the 12900K was very appealing to gamers, that is if you had the dollars to buy it. But since then, Intel have released a plethora of new processors, including the new release, which is the i5-12400. We're going to be taking a look at the 12400 in its own review video, which of course you can find linked below. But as part of our coverage, we were also sent by MSI a MAG B660 Mortar Wi-Fi DDR5 motherboard. That kind of just rolls off the tongue for its naming scheme, doesn't it? So, in this video then, we're going to be reviewing that very motherboard and answering whether it's worth your cash, right after this message from our sponsors. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Let's start things out with a quick overview of the motherboard itself, starting with the aesthetics. The most obvious thing about the MSI MAG B660 Mortar is the striking silver and black theme, with the odd hint of gold running through. The rear I.O. backplate is essentially baked in, so to speak, to the rear VRM heatsinks, though we'll discuss temperatures later, don't worry. Looks, though, are, as always, subjective. Personally, I think that the board looks pretty decent and should find itself complementing a good number of cases and colour themes, if that's a concern of yours. At the top left of the board, we have two 8-pin PSU connectors supplying power, of course, to the processor. This, claims MSI, will help provide more stable power delivery. The board, though, will work just fine with a single connector. As we've discussed in our i5-12400 coverage, the 80 watts, the load we managed to get the CPU to draw when running a torturous average workload of rendering and other work simultaneously, is going to be Amply, do you get it? Amp, never mind, supplied by a single connector. But if your power supply does support the additional connector, it's a nice feature to have, I suppose. To the right of the VRM heatsink at the top, as a number of other connectors, including for pump and CPU fans. We also have four memory slots. Of course, LGA1700 supports dual memory configurations, and the MAG B660 Mortar can run memory at 6200 MHz plus in dual configurations. Fortunately, the I.O. of the motherboard is pretty good. We have a single PCIe 4 uh, slot, which is of course times 16 for graphics, and at the bottom of the board is a single PCIe 3.0 16 slot, and we also have an additional PCIe 3.0 times one slot. There's support for two NVMe 4.0 drives, uh, sporting speeds of up to 64 Gbps, as well as Optane. We plonked a Sabrent Rocket NVMe 4.0 in our testing. I'll show the results of that in a moment. And for the topmost PCIe slot and also DDR5, MSI have gone ahead and reinforced the slots. This should provide extra stability with constant insertion slash reinsertion. That's what, never mind. Or if you're moving around your PC, particularly given some graphics cards are now about on par with a stellar mass. For those who need even more storage, there's the pretty typical six SATA ports. I can't possibly reel out all of the internal connectors because I'll be here forever, but for you lovely people, I've provided a photo. As usual, with the various USB connectors for your case you'll find, along with J Rainbow and JRPG support, a smattering of case fans and audio stuff. There's nothing super unusual about the placements. Everything is done pretty smartly. My only criticism is that the rear I.O. backplate is perhaps just a touch too close to the topmost PCIe slot, but really, I don't think it'll be a problem with basically any modern case. Speaking of rear I.O., for connectivity, we have four uh, USB 2.0 Type A's, a Display Port and HDMI for integrated CPU graphics, obviously, three USB 3.2 Gen 2's, 
which are of course a type A, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2 that's a type C, and a 2.5 GBPS uh, Ethernet connection, which is uh, powered by a Realtek 82015BG network solution. Furthermore, and Bluetooth 5.2 is also supported, and of course we also have audio jacks as well. Phew, now let's take a look at the BIOS. I'm using the reviewer's BIOS, which is non-public, known as Revision A06. Of course, things could change slightly by the time you get your hands on the board, but nevertheless, getting into the BIOS, the first thing which greets you is the configuration for the cooler. This is essentially how the BIOS will configure the boosting behavior of the CPU. Naturally, we don't get to mess around with an unlocked multiplier with this system, but still, boosting limits can be adjusted. We selected an AIO, which gives you over 4,000 watts, insert memes here. Basically, this is just extreme, quote unquote, performance. There's also the usual smattering of nice options you would expect for a modern BIOS, including Board Explorer. This allows you to figure out what is plugged into the motherboard. This can be handy for fault diagnostics, and honestly, it's a feature I've really liked for uh, MSI boards for a while now. And there's also other features such as allowing you to adjust the integrated peripherals and turning them on and off, as well as the resizable bar support and 4G support. Both of these were left on for our testing, just for your FYI, and a host of different CPU and memory options, for example, enabling SMT or whatever else you want to do. Honestly, there's nothing unusual here. If you've played with any reasonably modern BIOS, you'll have a pretty good understanding of what's on show. So how about phases and power delivery then? Well, um, the briefing I was given of the MAG B660, I was told that it's a 12 plus 1 plus 1 uh, configuration. Unfortunately, I couldn't really remove the heat sinks for our review unit because it's going to be going to another reviewer. So obviously when you remove heat sinks, it could affect temperatures and stuff like that. And I didn't think that was fair to other reviewers. So I basically decided to reach out directly to an MSI engineer. And I basically queried them, is there any doubling going on or anything like that? And I was told no. So basically we have 12 phases, which is for the CPU, a single phase for the GT, and then one phase for AUX. That's what I was told. I've discussed the performance of the i5-12400 further in another video, but again, we're largely looking at the board performance here. Starting out with audio performance, I investigated the quality using the Rightmark Audio Analyzer using the built-in 3.5mm connectors at the rear of the board. It was given a rating of excellent. Audio on this board is located in the bottom left, where you can see the PCB is essentially isolated for the audio components from other parts of the board. In theory, anyway, this helps minimize interference to the audio. Naturally, though, if you're plugging in your graphics card uh, to your TV using HDMI, um, or you're you know, then using a sound bar or something else, or even a separate sound card, then this may not be something that interests you. But still, decent onboard audio is important for a lot of headphone users, for example. PCIe bandwidth tests here. I used the PCIe bandwidth test for 3D Mark and used the Radeon RX 6800 XT to see how well it performs. There's not much to say here. Bandwidth figures were right about where you'd expect for the hardware and platform. Actually slightly beating out my tests using the MSI B550 board and also the 6800 XT and the 5950X. Although, let's be honest, the results were pretty much within margin of error. Storage performance, again, I was using a Sabrent Rocket NVMe 4.0 drive and this was in the topmost uh, slot labeled 1. I ran Anvil and other SSD tests. You can see the results on screen. Basically speaking, the drive performance was right around where you'd expect it to be. I also tested SATA SSDs as well, just to make sure there's nothing hinky. I didn't even bother to give you guys the performance numbers here because if you've seen any SATA 3.0 uh, benchmarks before, you'll know what to expect. Basically, there was no issues. It worked fine. So yeah, that's about all there is to it because SATA performance limitations are a thing. Just for your uh, FYI, I'm also providing some benchmarks of the CPU performance as well on this board. Though again, for the full 12400 performance coverage, do check out our review, which is linked below. 
Essentially though, the MAG B660 Mortar performed excellently. I don't have another B660 board to test, but discussing things with another reviewer who won't be named, I was told that the MSI results here are right in line with a competition board, which I also won't name. The CPU though performed right in line with where you'd expect, maintaining a 4.4 gigahertz for the single thread workloads and four gigahertz for multi-thread. Temps were excellent, mid forties using the 280 uh, MM AIO, and the processor delivered a pretty consistent amount of power, around 80 watts. Just for your FYI, honestly, this AIO is way too overkill for the CPU, but, you know, it's being tested, and well, there you go. Well, there you have it then. Let's wrap things up for the motherboard. I must say that I have found Alder Lake rather fun to review. And quite frankly, for this testing, the LGA 1700 platform has turned out to be pretty impressive. Sticking with my opinions for the board, as that's what I'm predominantly reviewing in this video, I've not had any problems with the MAG B660. It's had no crashes, no strange behavior, and nothing hinky, which it doesn't sound like a big deal, but the number of boards that I've been sent or kind of tested around launch window and they've been like just really weird behavior is, well, <laughs> it's been a thing. But yeah, for our early revision, which was the uh, A05, I didn't really encounter any bugs, but I basically didn't really test too long with that. I pretty much just updated straight to the uh, press uh, A06 revision BIOS. So that's from memory, but I'm pretty sure that's right. For other aspects of the board though, I have no real complaints, audio is pretty excellent and other performance metrics are right on par with what you would expect. My only complaint about this board, and it's not really MSI's fault per se, is that DDR5 memory is pretty expensive right now. And so that does leave you a question, should you go with the DDR4 version of the board? I was given prices pretty much last minute that this board is going to be uh, retailing UK prices. I don't have uh, USD, unfortunately, but it's, of course, going to be converted to pretty much what you would expect. So the Great British Pound prices are 210 That is including that. Um, and yeah, this is, of course, a higher-end premium mid-range board and there are additional layers on the board obviously we've discussed all of the features but as always it's kind of down to you whether you want to pay that or not there are certainly a lot cheaper boards from msi's own b660 lineup and i'm sure their competitors are going to offer similarly priced competitors as well uh, i don't have the prices to, to those boards my recommendation is that if you have quite slow ddr4 memory low capacity or whatever and you just kind of want to jump whole hog into uh, DDR5 land and Alder Lake, then this is an excellent board to go with. It, as I said, has been absolutely no problems with it, and its performance is pretty damn excellent. On the other hand, if you are an owner of some really good DDR4 memory, or maybe you can get some DDR4 memory at some pretty good prices, then you could check out the DDR4 version. How many times can I say DDR4 in a few sentences? You could check out the DDR4 version of this board, which is a few bucks cheaper, and I am led to believe that the performance is pretty much identical to the DDR5 board. So that is something you can be aware of. I was actually given an opportunity to review the DDR4 board as well. I was asked if I wanted it, but quite frankly, <laughs> I've been going insane trying to get all of the testing done for this board and you know the CPU tests and other things because of the Christmas period and other bits. So yeah, I kind of said maybe later on that one. With that said, yeah, the board has been absolutely excellent. And if you are interested in it, then I would actually give it a recommendation. With that said, thank you though very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, then, well, it's YouTube. You know what to do. I don't really need to describe it to you guys. Thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.